Our final speaker graduated with a degree in journalism and has written everything from marketing emails, corporate brochures, to investigative feature articles. In 2019, her debut young adult fiction novel, The Weight of Our Sky, which depicts Malaysia's historical May 13 through the eyes of a teenage girl, won the Freeman Award. A year later, her debut middle grade novel, The Girl and the Ghost, was selected as a Kirkus Prize finalist. Her latest release, The Queen of the Tiles, is also a smashing read, which, and it is one of the books that you can redeem at this KMF while stocks last. Here to speak to us about diversity and representation in children's literature and what it means to see yourself within the pages of a book, please welcome Hana Alkaf. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is a tall order to make me come last after all those amazing speakers. Uh, the brief that I was given when I was first invited for the event was that this session was for inspiring Malaysians. And I was like, I'm good at 50% of that. Like, I can be Malaysian in my sleep, right? I, I'm, I've been Malaysian my whole life. Like, I'm very good at being that. I don't know how to be inspiring. I am literally standing before the, some of the most brilliant minds in the country right now in slippers and a bright pink bandage on my toe because yesterday I somehow managed to drop a pot on my foot. Extremely inspiring, I know. You, everybody wants to be me right now. But um, what I do know is how to tell stories. And so today I'm going to talk to you about stories and I hope you take from that what you will. Um, and maybe don't pay attention to the bright pink plaster on my toe. Now, in his sequel to Alice in Wonderland, which was called Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There, at one point, Lewis Carroll has Alice say, there's no use trying. One can't believe impossible things. Now, all respect to Lewis Carroll and his genius, but this is simply not true. As a child, you could believe in up to 12 impossible things at the same time at any given moment, right? You could believe in the tooth fairy, you could believe in monsters under the bed, you could believe that everybody was playing fair. My daughter, for the longest time, when she was about four or five years old, thought pirates and parrots were the same thing, right? So if you asked her, what sound does a dog make? She would say woof. And what sound does a cat make? She would say meow. And if you asked her, what sound does a parrot make? She would say ar, matey. Children believe in many, many impossible things. It's only as we're growing older that we lose this ability to believe in the impossible. We become practical, we become pragmatic, and we lose this ability to believe and to dream. Now, I know, I know, that's me as a child. Um, peak cuteness, it was all downhill from there, as you can see. But uh, as a child, I was a child who believed in impossible things. And the reason I did was because I was a child who grew up in a home surrounded by books. I had parents who bought books as rewards, constantly took us to the bookstore. I had older siblings whose books I stole off their shelves all the time. I was read to every night before I went to sleep. In fact, my sister says I was very, very annoying as a child. She says this in general, but this time she has a specific reason. She said that as a child, if you read me a bedtime story, but you didn't do the voices, then I insisted that that story did not count. And therefore, you had to read me another story. Okay? She says this was annoying. I think it was, frankly, a genius idea on my part. But this is the kind of child that I was. I was fed a steady diet of stories, and because of that, my head was always full of dreams, of impossible things. Now, if you were a child, growing up reading books in English in Malaysia, then chances are many of the books on the screen right now will be familiar to you. These are books that we grew up reading. You'll see names that are very, very common. Enid Blyton, right? Little Women, Anne of Green Gables, Road Dahl, Harry Potter, the Narnia books. These are the sorts of books that I grew up reading in my home in the middle of Ampang Jaya in KL. Okay, when I present this slide to kids in schools or in universities or in colleges, I ask them to tell me 
what all these books have in common? And the answers that I get range from, well, they're all works of fiction, they all have children on the cover, right? They all feature people on the cover. But the answer that I'm looking for is that none of these people on the cover, none of these characters on the cover look like me. And none of the names on these covers, none of these authors have names that sound like mine. And so I can tell you exactly when I learned to stop believing in impossible things. Because I was a child who loved stories so much, when I was little, I really, really wanted to be an author. But at around the age of 11, I was in a bookstore, and I was looking around at all the books around me, trying to figure out what I was going to read next, what I was going to pick up next. And that's when I, hit, when I realized, when it hit me, that nobody on these covers had a name that sounded like mine. And as a child, the takeaway you get from that is that people that come from where we come from, that look the way we do, that have names that sound like ours, we don't get to tell these kinds of stories. This is not the realm for us. And so at age 11, in the middle of MPH, I became practical. I thought to myself, the only way that I'm going to be able to work with words, the thing that I love most, is if I become a journalist. That's legit, right? You can be a journalist in Asia. You can make money that way. You can make a living that way. You can make money that way. Again, I didn't lose my ability to um, believe in all sorts of <laughs> impossible things because I don't know what journalist around here makes a ton of money. But it was a legit way to work with words. And so from age 11 onwards, I stopped thinking about being an author and started thinking about becoming a journalist instead. That was when I lost my ability to believe in impossible things. Now, I want to say things have gotten better since then because I was 11 in 1996, which was <laughs> much longer ago than I care to admit. Um, I was 11 years old in 1996, and now it is 2022. And I would like to think, I think all of us would like to think that the landscape has improved since. Now, these statistics, I'm going to preface this, first of all, by saying that, yes, these statistics are mostly built, focused on America, on American publishing. And there's a few reasons for that. The first is that I, my books are published in America. My books are all published with American um, major publishers. And so this is the sphere in which I operate, all right? Um, but the second is that, well, American cultural hegemony is a very real thing, and if you were to walk the 10 minutes across over to Kinokuniya on the fourth floor of KLCC and you took a look at the children's and young adult section there, you would discover that most of those books, the vast majority of them, are in fact published in America and published in the West. That is just the reality within which we are operating here. So these are statistics that are compiled every year by the CCBC, which is the Cooperative Center for Children's Books, based in Wisconsin, in America. And every year, they gather up all the books published by mainstream American publishers um, to try and figure out how many of those books feature characters and are written by authors um, who are black, indigenous, and people of color, right? And so for 2021, what we can see here, that, here is that 13% of books that they received, which is over 3,000 books, were written by, uh, featured by POC characters, featured black characters, 10% featured Asian characters, 7% Hispanic, 2.2% indigenous, 0.6% Arab, 0.2% Pacific Islander. The rest of this circle is made out of white, animals, and other. And by other, we mean things like talking cars, crayons, stuff like that. So if you have a child or a grandchild who is still of age to be read to, and you walk into Kinokuniya right now, 
and you choose a picture book for them to read to them before bed tonight, the chances are higher that they will see a talking bunny in that page before they see somebody who looks like them. Now, 2021 was a weird year for everybody, including publishing. And so maybe the stats got a bit skewed. Maybe they didn't receive as many books from publishers that year. So here, let's take a look at the 2019, 2018 statistics from the CCBC. For the record, 2019 is when my first book came out. So I'm part of these numbers. I'm part of these statistics. Yeah? So these are divided into books about meaning that there are characters in there that are by POC, and books by, meaning they're written by by POC authors. In the about section, less than 30% of all books that were received by the CCBC, which was over 3,700 books, less than 30% featured characters who were by POC. And if you want to look at an even bigger discrepancy, if you look at books by by POC authors, 83.2% of books, kids' books that were published in 2019, were written by white authors. Now let's look at primary characters in those books, right? And let's look specifically at the things that applied to my book at the time, my debut. So we're looking at, that means The Weight of Our Sky was one of 323 books that featured an Asian protagonist. 9.3% or 346 books that featured a brown-skinned protagonist. And one of only 39 books written for kids and teenagers in 2019 that featured a Muslim main character. 39 books out of over 3,700. Now, why is this important? That is a wall of text up there. You guys can read that if you want. Um, But basically, a very amazing, um, one of the preeminent scholars of children's American literature currently working today, Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop, she says that books should serve two purposes. And the first is that they should be windows, offering views of worlds that may be real or imagined, familiar or strange, but that books should also be mirrors, that it should reflect your human experiences. And in that reflection, we can see our own lives and experiences as part of the larger human experiences. Now, if I were to ask you, right now to think about the bookshelves in your own home and the books that populate it right now as adults. I wonder how many of you could say how many of those books serve as windows and how many serve as mirrors. Or if I had you think about the favorite, absolute, most amazing book you ever read as a child, I wonder how many of you could say honestly that you saw yourselves within those pages. And I don't mean seeing yourself the way we all learn to see ourselves in characters that don't look like us, how we learn to find bits and pieces of ourselves in Hermione and in Joe March and in Matilda and in Anne Shirley, how we learn to identify ourselves as a Lucy or a Susan. I don't mean that. I mean, how many books did you read as a child where you could see yourself, your family, your culture, your experiences reflected back at you within those pages? Because I have to tell you, I didn't see those until I started writing my own books. Sometimes when you don't have a mirror, it is down to you to make your own. Now, I want you to think about how powerful it could be for the children in your lives if you took those books from the previous slide and you gave them these instead. 
Not me specifically lah. I mean, you could find other Malaysian authors too. I'm not just like, this isn't just one giant like advertisement for my own books, I promise. Um, although I would appreciate it if you would buy them. But, <laughs> but this isn't meant to be one giant ad for like my own work. Like I'm not just going to be here at the end and be like, and that's why you should read Hannah Alkaf books. But what I am saying is that if your kids get to see themselves on the covers of books available worldwide, if they get to see themselves as heroes of a story, if they get to see themselves having those adventures, being the one who gets to solve mysteries, being the one who gets to have happy endings within the narrative, maybe they too can start dreaming of impossible things. Thank you very much and have a pleasant afternoon.